Okay, so we've talked about what singular value decomposition is, and we'll talk more about why it matters. But this is a video about the very practical subject of how to compute singular value decomposition. And the real answer is you compute singular value decomposition by telling your computer to do the job, but we do also want you to know how to do it by hand. So I'm going to explain how to do it by hand. So to remind you, here's what singular value decomposition means. It means we can find some orthonormal vectors in the target space and some other orthonormal vectors in the source space, such that A takes the source vectors of the target vectors up to scalars. So here is how we are going to actually find the singular values, the sigmas, the u's, and the v's. It's going to be by a trick. The trick is think about A, A transpose. So suppose that A is u dv, then A, A transpose, so here's A again, it's, whoops, do it this way. Here's A, U sigma VV transpose, and here's that A again, and then that whole equation gets transposed. Remember when you transpose a product, the terms show up in the reverse order. So this V transpose gets transposed and shows up here as a V. This sigma gets transposed and shows up over here. And this U gets transposed and shows up over here. It's a U transpose. Now V transpose V, that's just the identity because V is orthogonal. So that just becomes the identity and goes away. Diagonal matrix times diagonal matrix again, that just gives me a square diagonal matrix of sigma squareds. And so we get that A, A transpose is U sigma squared u transpose. In other words, sigma square, sigma one squared, sigma two squared, etc. the sigma squareds are the eigenvalues of AA transpose. And the columns of u are the eigenvectors. So we're going to find singular values and singular vectors of A using the eigenvectors and eigenvalues of AA transpose. And similarly, the columns of V are the eigenvectors of A transpose A, and the eigenvalues of A transpose A are also the squares of the sigmas. And this is a little bit confusing when A is not square, and so I've chosen my example to not be square so you can see how it works. So here comes my example. This three by two matrix, we're going to compute its singular values and its singular vectors. The first thing we do is we compute A, A transpose. So what happened here was I took A, I took A transpose and I multiplied them. So for example, this 200 up here, that was computed as 14 squared plus two squared. This negative 250, that was the dot product of this first row by this second row. So this three by three matrix gives the dot products between the different rows of this three by two matrix. So that's what AA transpose is. Then I computed the characteristic polynomial of AA transpose. It's a cubic, but you know, how lucky for us, it's almost as if someone made this example to be easy, the cubic factors. 900 minus lambda, 225 minus lambda, negative lambda. So the eigenvalues of AA transpose are 900, 225, and 0. And the singular values of A are their square roots. Singular values of A are 30, 15, 0. Then finally, we compute the eigenvectors of AA transpose. They're going to be orthogonal because they're eigenvectors of a symmetric matrix. And we'll normalize them to be length 1, so they'll also be orthonormal. So here's U1, U2, U3. Here are the eigenvectors of AA transpose. And those are going to be the singular vectors of A in the target space. So once again, 900, 225, 0. Those are the eigenvectors of A, the eigenvalues of AA transpose. Their square roots are the singular values of A. 
These over here are the eigenvectors of AA transpose, and we've normalized them to be length one. And they are also the singular vector in the target space for A. To get the V vectors, we work with A transpose A instead. So here's A transpose A. These are the dot product of the columns of A with each other to give this two by two matrix. We compute the characteristic power allele, And if you do this, you should see the same eigenvalues, 900 to 225 and so forth showing up, except some of the zeros are missing because it's a two by two matrix. So it has two eigenvalues instead of three. And then again, the singular values of our square roots, 30 and 15. And the eigenvectors of A transpose A are our V vectors. So at the top of this slide, I have recorded everything we've done so far. And now I've put it together to get the singular value decomposition. So these U vectors show up over here. These singular values show up on my diagonal. And these V vectors are the column, are the rows, sorry, over here. And that is how you compute singular value decomposition. Except that really the way you compute singular value decomposition is like this. So here is a mathematical window. Whoops. Sorry. Here is a mathematical window. Um, need to drag it. Up here is the matrix A that we've been using as our running example, and I'll show it to you looking pretty. If I compute its singular value decomposition, and again, I'll make that look pretty for you. Here is the singular value decomposition of A. It's a list of three matrices. Now I've just told it to display each matrix in that list looking pretty. Here they are. Uh, one useful variant is very often you don't want all the singular values. What you want is the one or two or three largest singular values. And we'll talk a little bit more about why that is in future videos. So if you wanted just the largest singular value of A, then here it is. And again, I'll make that look pretty like that. Here is just the vector for the single largest singular value, just the matrix for the largest singular value, just the V vector for the largest singular value. And, that one, and it's one singular value because I put one. If I put 12 here, we have 12 largest singular values. Of course, I'd need a larger matrix if I wanted to do that. If instead of Mathematica, you like MATLAB, here's MATLAB. Whoops. Let's enter that same matrix. It was negative 14, 2. So I'm just going to check out of the right matrix value. 16, 13, 4, 22. I did something wrong. Sorry. Negative 14, negative 2, 16, 13, 4, 22. There we go. Okay, sorry about that first one. Here's the correct one. There's the three by two matrix we've been using all along. If I ask for the singular value decomposition of A, well, if you type SVDA, what you get are the singular values, 30 and 15, same thing we've been seeing. MATLAB does this thing again where you can get more values returned by I tell I get where to store them. So if I write UDV equals SVDA, then it will store my U in U, it will store my D in D, and it will store my V in V. And these are not quite the same matrices you've seen before, but they're equivalent. They're the same up to switching the signs on some of the eigenvectors, which doesn't matter. And you can do the same trick again. 
If you want to compute just some of them, the command for that is SVDS. Just put an S at the end. If I tell it, I just want the first one. And there you go. The first singular value is 30. And here are the corresponding singular vectors. So I'll switch back to my slides now. That's, whoops, there we go. SVD is the singular values, U comma D comma V equals SVD in order to store the triple U, D, and V in the matrices U, D, and V. And if you just want the K singular values, that's SVD, S, A, K. And again, I don't use NumPy, but people told me you really have to cover NumPy. I think this is the correct command. All right, this is how you compute singular value decomposition. Uh, we're going to have another video saying a little bit about what you do with singular value decomposition. And then we're going to finally have an optional video about why does singular value decomposition exist. For now, I will stop here.